Well, here's a video that really bites. <laughs> Six of Megalodon's most vicious enemies. Megalodon was the biggest and baddest shark of the ocean 23 million years ago. It could grow up to 60 feet, and its jaw bite was stronger than a T. rexus. It was a force to be reckoned with, eating other sharks, whales, and dolphins for breakfast. So, you might think that there was nothing that could stop it. But even this massive shark had enemies, and their fights could be lethal. Think of a T-Rex versus Godzilla. Way out in the middle of the ocean, wearing life vests, duking it out, and you get the picture. Well, maybe not life vests. Those are from the Flintstones period. Check out these six enemies of Megalodon that could certainly give it a run for its money. Well, they didn't have money then either, but you get it, right? Hey, first, make sure you click the subscribe button and turn on notifications. Now you'll be one of the first brightsiders to watch our videos. Counting down from number 6. Cetothurium. Okay, so they've given me a bunch of these big $10 long Latin words to try to say. Let's just count up how much I can earn here, okay? Cetothurium was a baleen whale from the Cetotheridae family. It lived in the mid-Miocene period to the early Pliocene period and grew up to 15 feet. Fossil records have revealed that Cetothurium would be Megalodon's top target. Megalodon would be massive compared to Cetothurium, but Cetothurium had a few tricks up its sleeve. The very first whales had pointed teeth for catching and killing other sea animals. Later on, Cetothurium evolved and developed baleen a strong but flexible material made of keratin, which caught small organisms and worked as a strainer as it fed. The small organisms would have been caught in large enough quantities to keep Cetothurium satisfied. This would keep Cetothurium close to the surface and away from Megalodon. But when Cetothurium was spotted by Megalodon, there was no escape. Megalodon would dive down to look up at its prey and then it would ram Cetothurium at high speed, damaging vertebrae in the process. Cetothurium would be too stunned to be able to escape. And all's whale that ends whale. Number 5. Zygophysetter veruli. This large predator was unknown until geologists found an almost complete Zygophysetter skeleton in 2016 on the shores of southern Italy. It's also referred to as a killer sperm whale because of its strong similarities in size to the killer whale and its close relationship to the sperm whale. Zygophysetter lived in the late Miocene period, some 11 to 7 million years ago, and it cruised the Mediterranean region. From fossil records, paleontologists have gathered that Zygophysetter grew to be 20 feet long. It had an asymmetrical cranium, which is commonly associated with high-frequency sound production and echolocation. Zygophysetter used its echolocation to find and hunt large prey. Their teeth could range from 6 to 10 inches, and they had 14 teeth in their lower jaw and 13 on top. Since their teeth were large and they had full jaw functionality, it's likely that they fed on large fish, dolphins, small whales, and cephalopods such as squids and octopuses. Its lethal bite would have been its best chance against Megalodon. Number 4. Allophysetter Now, Allophysetter was a predatory whale, very similar to modern-day sperm whales. Sperm whales are the largest predators and the largest toothed whales today. Allophysetter lived in the Miocene period. Back then, the country of Panama was underwater, and many species crossed from the east coast of North America to the west coast through a passageway. The passageway, called the Central American Seaway, was also a favorite travel spot for Megalodon. Allophysetters reached a length of 20 feet and weighed about 2,400 pounds. With these specifications, anyone can see that Megalodon was much larger. 
But allophysetters would swim in groups to repel attacks by giant beasts like Megalodon in the hope of being protected by the group. Number 3. Oh my. Brigmophysetter shagensis. Now, Brigmophysetter was a highly predatory sperm whale. The only known fossil is a nearly complete skeleton that is dated at 14 to 15 million years old. From it, paleontologists gathered that Brigmophysetter was 23 feet long. Like Zygophysetter, Brigmophysetter also had teeth in its upper and lower jaws. These powerful jaws and their size set them at the top of the food chain, and they roamed near the coast of Japan. Like sperm whales, it had a spermaceti organ, which gave it the ability to use echolocation to find and identify prey. Megalodons traveled all the way around the world, as evidenced by the location of their fossils. Megalodons and Brigmophysetters swam the oceans at the same time, the Miocene period. Brigmophysetter was a predator to fish, squid, and other small whales but its role could switch from predator to prey when it faced Megalodon. Number 2. Ramphosuchus Now Ramphosuchus is one of the largest known crocodiles ever to roam Earth. The world wouldn't even be aware of the existence of Ramphosuchus if it wasn't for the discovery of incomplete sets of fossils that are mostly teeth and skulls. Ramphosuchus is estimated to have been 26 to 36 feet long. It inhabited the Indian subcontinent and, like Megalodon, it lived in the Miocene period. It's a relative of the modern false gharial, a native of peninsular Malaysia. Like the false garia, it is believed to have had a longer and thinner snout compared to other crocodiles. It also had multiple teeth to capture its prey. Theory suggests that Ramphosuchus fed on fish and, on occasion, much larger prey. Ramphosuchus was such an excellent swimmer thanks to its strong and long tail. Given its massive size, it would go into rivers and oceans to try to find enough food to sustain it. This is where it was likely to have occasionally encountered Megalodon. Ramphosuchus and Megalodon would have fought over the same food. Given that Ramphosuchus had such a long and strong bite, it would have been a big challenger to Megalodon. Number 1. Leviathan Melville You might know this whale by the name Leviathan. Soon after researchers discovered Leviathan's fossils and assigned it the name Leviathan, they realized that the name had already been taken by a mastodon a century earlier. This caused the switch to the Hebrew spelling of Leviathan. Now, Leviathan and Megalodon were two of the most terrifying creatures to roam the oceans, and both lived during the Miocene period. Leviathan was a whale that was 60 feet long and weighed up to 50 tons. Its largest teeth were up to 14 inches long. A theory about Leviathan's method of hunting is that it was very similar to Megalodon's. It would dive deep and headbutt its prey at fast speeds, and its target would be other whales. Megalodon and Leviathan competed for the same food and fought over turf. They both preferred to feed on baleen whales like Cetothurium, which we mentioned earlier. Leviathan had the longest teeth, but Megalodon had the strongest bite. They were both of a similar size and weight, and had plenty of reasons to fight each other. So who do you think would win in a fight? It's unclear if these two beasts actually targeted each other, but it is likely that they butted heads over food. Regardless of whether these predators could win a battle against Megalodon or not, their existence put a big dent in Megalodon's lifespan. Megalodon was of such a massive size that it needed over 2,500 pounds of food a day. Research suggests that the increase in competition for food from other predators and the lack of prey might have been a strong factor in Megalodon's extinction. So, who do you think would win a fight between Leviathan and Megalodon? Do you think any of these predators could have taken down Megalodon? Tell us your opinion in the comments. Oh, and give us your guess as to how many times I had to read a long Latin $10 word. 
And finally, don't forget to click subscribe to stay on the bright side of life.